저희가 이제 입주 설명이 시작할 건데요. 먼저 생명 테스트를 홍보 영상 하나 보시고 시작하겠습니다. 아, 네. 다음으로는 저희 수명태소리의 주임 교수를 계신 양경수 교수님께서 인사 말씀 해주실 텐데요. 지금 교수님께서 그 미국 출장 중이시라 이제 직접 참석을 못 하셨고 영상으로 계신 저희가 네, 교수님께서 인사 말씀을 해주시겠습니다. 
global standards of master's degree study and high-level effective teaching, but global standards aren't good enough if you can't make it fit your teaching in Korea. So our course is arranged around this idea, and so we have six courses in the SMU TESOL program. 
I'm going to talk about methodology one and methodology two. We break it into two courses. Um, and we're going to have some other professors come up and talk about ICC, intercultural communication, and S second language acquisition, academic skills development, and then I will talk about practicum one more time. So these are the six courses in our program. And as I said, our focus for choosing these courses and building these courses is so that we maintain a high level of standards that meets all global standards for teaching English as a second or other language. But we need it to fit your needs in Korea, whether it's prepar uh, preparation for the sunum, or whether you're trying to teach students who have done sunum prep and now they need fluency help, um, or whether you're working with middle schoolers who are starting to first uh, formally study language. So, Singam Tiesel is constantly being updated and upgraded and revised to keep the current standards. Everything that we do is backed by research and also practical experiences in Korea. I'm going to talk about methodology one and two very briefly. Methodology one and two come uh, right after each other. We do this one for the first half of the semester and we do this one the second half. Methodology 1 wants to introduce the essentials of highly effective language teaching. Now, if you are a brand new teacher, that means you get introduced to the most fundamental ideas for teaching languages. If you're an experienced teacher, then what it means is you already have a background of knowledge. And we're going to build on that by talking about the most current research into effective teaching. Our course is organized around three things. A teacher's beliefs, a teacher's practices, the things we actually do in class, and of course, what teachers have to know to be a good teacher. And SLA is going to help us a lot with that uh, by helping you build your knowledge about how people learn languages. So, I just want to give a brief example of each one of these. So when I say that we need certain kinds of knowledge, what I mean is when we're choosing uh, activities, when we're planning our teaching, you have to understand how people learn languages. If they learn languages like this, but you teach like this, your class is not going to be very effective. So you have to understand what people learn first, second, third. You have to understand the differences between low level, mid level, and high level. We'll have in-class demonstra teaching demonstrations. We'll teach you different frameworks uh, for how to think about teaching and how to plan your teaching. And you're going to walk out with a lot of knowledge about good teaching versus bad teaching in casual language. We also will talk about skills. As I said, we will do a lot of demonstrations in class of teaching. And we'll teach you things like how to choose course books, how to modify course books if your school gives one to you. If you get stuck in a school with a very low quality textbook, it doesn't mean your class has to be low quality. You can make it better. And we're also going to teach you the process of thinking and planning your teaching by making your materials very visual and very understandable. They have to be visual for your students to learn because English is a foreign language. They won't hear it on the streets. They need your expertise. The final component of methodology is represented by the heart. And this has two meanings. Number one, your teaching beliefs drive everything that you do. So the teacher's beliefs are incredibly important. How you think about your students, how you feel about your students, and the kind of experience you try to create. At the same time, you have to think about your students' hearts as well. If you create a class where your students don't feel positive, if you teach a class that would be boring with most other teachers, how can you make it not be boring in your class? How can you build community in your class, develop friendships, develop relationships? If you can't help two students be nicer to each other, and you say, okay, please talk with a partner, 
are they going to have a high quality conversation or a low quality conversation? Well, if they don't have a good relationship, the quality of the conversation will go down. Less English practice means less learning. So here we have the head, the head, and the heart. In methodology one and methodology two, we're going to talk about these three elements of incredibly powerful methodology. In methodology one, we're going to talk about the essentials for all classes, where we teach listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And then for methodology two, we're going to take everything that we study, and now we're going to change it and make it fit the specific Korean teaching context that we work in. So if you work in a public high school, or you work at a hagwon, or you work with middle schoolers, or you teach at university level, how do you take these wonderful ideas and change them for each new class you teach, or for each group of students you have? And that is methodology one and methodology two. I spent a lot of time on it. It's incredibly important. You become a lot more clever. You make better decisions for teaching. And it also prepares you to teach better. We have a wonderful balance of theory and practical stuff. Theory helps you make decisions. Practical stuff helps you use it in the classroom. OK. So that's methodology one and methodology two. I'd like to invite Dave up to talk about intercultural communication. Thank you. Thank you, Evan Liddy. So first of all, wow. Full house. Congratulations, everyone, on taking the first step in your SMU TESOL teaching career. So congratulations. Um, now I'd like to tell you a bit about one of our very special courses called the Intercultural Communication Course. Now, often our TESOL trainees ask, why do I need to know about intercultural communication? if I'm going to teach English. This is essentially how people in different cultures communicate with each other, right? How do Americans communicate versus Koreans, right? You'll find that to, to be a good English teacher, you need to have an understanding of this, because language and culture are really two sides of the same coin. And you can't have one without the other, okay? Um, First of all, something that's important to note here is what do, our what do our students do? They come to us and they learn about the components of culture. How is that related to the English that you choose to teach in the classroom? And that brings up questions like, who does English belong to? Does it belong to me? Ned and Liddy? Christy Vandersdale? Does it belong to everyone? I'm here to tell you that English is yours, it's mine, belongs to my students and your students. Okay, And if you give them that sense of ownership, they're going to go far with their English learning, knowing that their culture is important, and that they can teach their students to understand English in a very personalized way. There's something else that's important to note on this slide here, what we have here is the number of native speakers versus the number of non-native speakers. Which do you think is greater? Which do you think is greater? More native speakers of English or more non-native speakers of English? Raise your hand if you think that there are more native speakers of English in the world than non-native speakers of English. Raise your hand. How many think there are more non-native speakers of English in the world? Non-native speakers. Think about what we're dealing with, America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Britain, versus the rest of the world, right? So that means that the English that you're using, the English that your students will be using, is changing the language for everyone. Okay, so that should give you a sense of ownership and a sense of agency. Your English counts. Okay, your English matters. Let me give you a few practical examples. Uh, the man you just met, Nevin Liddy, when he started here, almost 10 years ago or more, he was told, don't look your students in the eye. 
<laughs> Don't look your students in the eye. Today, no one tells us that, right? But the reason he wasn't supposed to make eye contact was because of cultural differences, right? I'll give you another one. If a Korean speaker says to you, where are you going? That's not a real question. Okay? This is something that our students, our students like to learn about because it influences the way that you teach English. Right? In English, we don't say, where are you going? But we might say, what's up? How are you? That's not a real question. It's just hello. Okay, so these are the kinds of things you pick up on in intercultural communication. And we feel like it will really inform inform your knowledge of English, your knowledge of culture, and your ability to teach it to your students. Okay? I think the absolute most interesting part of the course is the idea of English as an international language. Because that, that's the part of the course where we say English doesn't belong to native speakers after all. Right? Because everyone in this room if you can understand me now, you're an expert speaker of English. And we want you to spread that knowledge and that ability to your students, who will hopefully be the future of English in Korea. Okay? And with that, I'd like to bring up my colleague Christy Bannersdale to speak about second language acquisition. Thank you. He was right. <laughs> a lot of people here. Okay, well that's awesome. Welcome. Um, as both of my colleagues mentioned, um, I, I'm the coordinator for Second Language Acquisition and Academic Skills Development. Um, and Second Language Acquisition is pretty much like it mentions here. Oh, this side's better. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's how people learn languages. So um, it's based on this idea that you know we don't just learn languages in an all or nothing way. Okay, you don't just wake up one day and suddenly you can speak a language, right? That's not how it works, unfortunately. Um, there's actually um, there's a very systematic process that we go through. Um, there's a there's actually for many people a very specific order in the way that we learn grammar and the way that we learn vocabulary. And second language acquisition is, is all about that. What is the process that we go through? What are the best methods that we should be using in our classroom based on this research? And so for that reason, it connects very closely to the methodology courses that you're gonna take here. So SLA, second language acquisition, is all about the theories of how we, how do we really learn languages? Okay, what is actually going on um, in our brains and in our environment? And what is the best way? Because like Niven mentioned, if, if we really are learning languages this way, but you're teaching in this way, then it's no surprise that you find that your students struggle when it comes to actually using the language. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so SLA is all about how people learn languages and what are the best ways that, that we can make sure that we are designing our classrooms, um, the types of teaching strategies that we're using, the material that we're choosing, the, um, the amount of content that we're delivering it at one time. Okay, so we also talk a little bit about the memory and how that works. Okay? Um, and the other course that we have here is Academic Skills Development. And this is a, the course is modeled off of, an, off of an academic, English for Academic Purposes course, which is very similar to an EAP, EAP English for Academic, um, EAP? Purposes. Purposes, right. <laughs> English for Academic Purposes that you would find at an American university for graduate students. Okay, and it's giving you the skills that you need to be able to read and write uh, within a graduate program because there's, there is some reading and writing that goes along with graduate school and graduate level work. Unfortunately, there's, there's no way to get around that. Okay, 
So this course uh, is here to, to support you throughout your time here at SMU TESOL, to, um, to allow you to develop your skills as a writer and as a reader of, of high-level academic content, and, um, and to help you become better at both as well as just a better student in general. And you're also learning ways to pass those skills on to your students, to pass better writing skills on to your students and learning how to teach writing as a skill. Okay? So that's all that I have, actually. Um, Nevin? <laughs> okay, yeah, he's gonna talk about practicum. Give me a second while I fast forward here. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about practicum last uh, because I and all the faculty love this course. Um, practicum sounds very similar to practical, and there's a reason for that. Uh, this is our class where you get to play around a little bit, um, get up in front of the classroom, practice teaching, and uh, you get to use all of the ideas from all the other courses, right? So you learn something in ICC or in SLA or in methodology or, um, and of course you've been improving your writing skills in ASD. And now you come to the practicum class and you get to practice those ideas. So, what I mean is, um, you'll get up and you'll have a chance to practice a variety of different styles of teaching. Some things, like uh, presentations, you'll have a chance to present vocabulary and grammar very clearly. Okay, so down here. So you'll be able to work on teaching English in English and explaining ideas with English that is understandable for your students. You'll also get a chance to take that and then take it to the next step, which is after you teach something clearly, you check if your students understand and be able to give them feedback, once again, in English. But if we just work on presentations and checking understanding, that's not enough. And if we do that day after day after day, our classes will be very boring for students. So we also have to do things where students get moving around the classroom, and we introduce a variety of different techniques um, to have your students be more active. Because if there's one thing that research shows again and again and again and again, the more active your students are, the more they are going to learn. It's been shown not just in English, but in almost every subject of human study, but it's especially true in an EFL situation. In your classroom, your students have the opportunity to listen to English from you, but also to practice saying things to other people. And sometimes they'll say it correct and they'll feel more confident. Sometimes they'll say it wrong, but that also helps them learn because you give them feedback. It's incredibly important for your students to be active. And we design our classes the same way. Today we're introducing the program and you guys are all sitting there nice and quiet. But this is not the usual style of our classes, right? <laughs> We get you involved too. So how it works is you learn ideas in the other courses, and the teachers lead activities, so you can see a good teaching model, good teaching demonstration. And then you come to practicum class, and you get a chance to practice teaching in a safe environment, because all your classmates are there to support you. Now we also, if you are interested, we have a volunteer program. So if you have zero teaching experience, after you do the practicum class, you can also volunteer to teach real students if you're looking for some quick teaching experience. If you're an experienced teacher, this class has a very different meaning. If you're an experienced teacher, you already know the basics of how to teach. So you're not going to waste your time with that. You're going to find things that are hard in your classroom, and you'll use practicum to try new things. So you'll get to try them in a safe environment, before you try them in the real world. Pratt class is extremely fun, um, very enjoyable for both students and teachers. Um, let me just give you a quick video to show you what I mean. Uh, okay. So here, I've just taken a regular 
surprise in class, and I fast forwarded it. But here you can see teachers who are practicing on their whiteboard skills, collecting answers from students, having students do pair work and group work, collecting answers again. It's teachers who get to practice in a very involved and interactive situation, right? But if you watch carefully, and I hope the video repeats, you can almost follow most of the lessons just by watching what the teacher is doing right now. Right here we have a little bit of group work, some pair work. The teacher is doing a slight presentation, getting students up to the board and getting them involved, using the whiteboard very clearly. So if you were even a stranger in this class, you could sit down, watch the teaching and understand. We want our students to be involved and interactive in class. Your students should be, whether you're teaching test prep or whether you're teaching communication skills. So don't be scared by the fast speed. <laughs> but these are the basic skills that we want you to work on, using the whiteboard, asking questions, giving instructions, getting your students involved. If you just walk in and tell your students to do group work, it's not going to work. You have to build up to it in your class. And this class gives you quick, clear, easy techniques how, and then you get to practice them, right? Okay. So anyways, part of the class, extremely enjoyable. You get to connect all the ideas that you studied in your course. And you also get to... <laughs> Somebody got to the couch, huh? <laughs> Okay, you get to combine all the ideas and then you get to try them in real life, in a safe place. So here we are, that's the SMU TESOL program. We're meeting the standards of international language teaching around the world, but we're also adapting them specifically to Korean needs and Korean contexts. So we talk about the exact classes that you teach connected to the research and techniques you need to know to do the best job possible. We've chosen six courses to get these ideas across to you. They're powerful, they're fun, they're enjoyable. You're going to have a great time. I also want to point out that we have an online version of this as well, online, offline version. Okay. Um, Christy and Tom are the current teachers. I was one of the online teachers. The online, offline version is the exact same courses, the exact same program. Nothing is different. The degree is exactly the same. But the only difference is, is that three hours a week you'll spend doing online courses and nine hours a week you'll spend in person in our regular classes. We do this because we know that people are very, very busy these days and they might not be able to come to, the, uh, to soup day three days a week. So we created this option. Um, I love teaching online, it's good fun. Uh, you'll enjoy it too. But if you're very busy, um, or you live far away, this is a good choice for you. Um, I've had students come from Pohang, from Jeju, from Gwangju, uh, from all over Korea. One person from the Philippines. Um, so this is an option for if you're busy or if you're far away, or maybe if you're a public school teacher and you can't get here three days a week. All right. So this is our program. We love it. We know that you're going to love it, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. This is SMU Tiso. So now I'd like to introduce the next speaker. And that is me. <laughs> um, so uh, while I'm up here, I'm going to quickly talk about a different program, completely different than SMU. So I wish, can I borrow your jacket so at least I look different? <laughs> I should have brought like a red tie or something, I don't know. Anyways, um, I'm going to talk about a completely different course, right? And then your while on guys will show. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about this different course, then we'll come back and talk about the YL program. So uh, anyways, uh, SMEL Teach. It's a relatively new course we've created, and we created it for um, a very specific purpose. Now, I said earlier that we have a lot of busy people. Some people are too busy to come to the SMU or the YL program, even online. And some people are scattered around Korea. So we did create one 100-hour online course. Okay, so it's 100% online. Okay. 
It's shorter than SMU and it's shorter than YL. And it has two components. 50 hours of self-access homework, or self-access coursework, and 50 hours of long, live online classes. So these are both based on a website, but the big difference is, this is a website that you can go to anytime you want. If it's 2.45 in the afternoon and you have 45 minutes, you go here, you do a little bit of study, you answer some questions, um, and you can take this at your leisure. The online classes are the same as regular classes. You will have class every Tuesday from 8.30 to 10.30 p.m., every Thursday from 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. is one of the schedules. But this is a real live online class, and I'd like to introduce it a little bit to you. The first 50 hours was developed by National Geographic Learning, Cengage Learning, and ETS. Right? We're working in partnership with them to provide a 100-hour online course. Um, it's developed by Donald Freeman, Ann Burns, and Ann Katz. And uh, you'll get a separate login to the ELT website, and 50 hours of the coursework is there. You study uh, three basic things. Teaching foundations, teaching skills and uh, teaching practices, and then one final course about putting it all together. So in their off, uh, or sorry, in their um, asynchronous course, as I said, if it's 2.45 in the afternoon, you want to study for 45 minutes, you log in, you choose one of these things, you study it, and then you take a test afterwards. It's completely asynchronous. You don't need a teacher for that one. Very high convenience. So that's 50 hours of the coursework. But the other 50 is developed by SeekDay. Right? So Stafford and I um, worked together to develop the online courses. Stafford um, couldn't be here today because he's actually presenting about this at a conference today. So. Um, we developed the online classes, and we developed those online classes to be high quality. Now, how many people have taken an online course? Raise your hand. How many people have taken an online course where you log into your computer and you join a class? Anybody? Don't be shy. <laughs> Just one. Okay, fascinating. These days, usually it's 50% of the audience. Okay, so here's an online course, and it's live which means you have a real teacher. What we wanted to do is we wanted to take our regular teaching experience in the classroom. By the way, this is this room. Okay. We wanted to take the regular quality of our in-person classes and we wanted to move it online. So when I say high quality in-person, I mean high quality group work, interactive discussions with both teacher and other students, getting individual feedback from the teacher, and having lessons that are very meaningful. So how do we take all of this stuff and put it into an online class? Well, the first thing I want to emphasize is that this is live. This is me. <laughs> These are my students. And this is a small group working together right now, right? So in that class, I have about 20 students. That's about the maximum we put in one class. And just like a regular class, we can give lectures, we can ask questions, we can do group work. This uh, here, we have our students, as I pointed out. And here we have a regular whiteboard, just like we have this kind of whiteboard. Okay? So down here, we have texting, so you can ask specific questions, or I can give you grammar advice. And if it works, which I don't know if it's going to on this, uh, there we go. So this is actually a video of the class of me teaching. So uh, we have a little bit of lecture. I ask you some questions. There's lots of visuals. It's very interesting, very meaningful. The content of the curriculum is made of three classes. The first class is about techniques and principles, techniques for teaching and principles for teaching. The second class is called management and materials. It's about creating a good feeling with your students, making your students work harder, behave better. And we have a third course called Current Issues, and some of the stuff we actually talk about is ICC stuff, like who does English belong to, how do we use computers in education. We have a wide variety of discussions about current teaching in Korea. Okay. 
Okay, so three courses. In every course, you will be exposed to many different teaching activities. And here's the key part. All the pictures that you see in this course, all the activities that you see, all the demonstrations, they are all from Korean classrooms. This isn't American style teaching, it's not uh, international teaching. This is activities from Korean classrooms with Korean teachers and Korean learners. As I said, we also wanted to have discussions. Right? So before we saw the big list, but here I have one, two, three, four, four groups. And what that means is these four people will all be in their homes, and all they will see is the three other people. So I'll give you an interesting task to do, you'll work with your group, and then you'll share your answers with the class. Again, we have the video. Every time you talk, your picture gets big. Right? So this is your group, and when you talk, everybody can see who is talking, right? It's live, it's fun, it's incredibly high quality education, it's enjoyable. So this is our new 100 hour course. 50 hours is self-access, you just go to EL Teach website, sign in whatever time you want. 1 a.m., you just get home, you want to do a little bit for 20 minutes, go ahead. Okay? But this one is a regular class, and you will have one of the teachers. Um, actually, both of these teachers also teach in EL Teach, along with myself and Stafford and Tom Randall. So uh, you'll still have access to live interactive classes. Okay. So that's all I have for that. I wanted to keep it short. Um, you guys about ready? All right then. In that case, uh, sorry that you had to listen to me for so long. Uh, Stafford was away for today, so he got me twice. Um, I'd like to invite Eli up. Eli is the program coordinator for the Young Learner TESOL. We handle middle and high and uh, university level students. And Eli is going to come and talk about. <laughs> of course, you're still using that picture. Okay. So, I used to work in YL. So, anyways, um, Eli is going to come and talk about the curriculum for the YL. They have a lot of great stuff for you. So, thank you very much. Yeah, we, we leave all the good-looking teachers in the promotional material as long as possible. Then you ought to switch it to you. <laughs> all right, well, uh, I just uh, want to say thank you for coming. Good to see you all. I just want to give you a brief introduction to the Young Learner TESOL program. That's what the YL stands for. Whereas the SMU program is designed for more adult learners, uh, the Young Learner program is designed specifically for you if you would like to teach children grade uh, 1 through 6, generally speaking. Um, now children, uh, I think we, it's kind of common knowledge now, children are great at learning languages, right? And we're all very jealous of their uh, great language learning abilities. You know, they're, they're curious, they uh, tend to be more flexible in their thinking, and they don't mind uh, being silly and, and uh, saying things wrong or funny. So uh, they have that great ability to develop a natural control of the language and that natural pronunciation that is so hard for us adults uh, to get a grasp on. However, children are not just miniature adults. Okay? They're not just little adults. They don't think like adults. They don't see the world like adults do. And so to teach children effectively, we have to understand them and design classes that fit their particular needs. So to give you the uh, introduction to what we do, I just want to answer two questions. First of all, in this program, what will you learn? Uh, and second of all, how do we teach that information to you? So uh, as for what you learn, there are six courses in our program that you can see here, 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 and here. And each of those courses runs two hours a week for 20 weeks, uh, totaling 240 classroom hours, uh, which is important because as more and more jobs are requiring a TESOL certificate, they're also increasing the hours requirement. So 240 is a very high number of hours, and if you're a public school teacher, it will even satisfy uh, a lot of, pub or most all, public school teacher requirements. Um, and so, uh, 
our six, of our six courses, I will be introducing three. But first, I will invite up another professor of YLTSAW, the esteemed Kara Wagner, and she will introduce uh, the first three of these courses to you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for that introduction. Welcome, and we're so happy that you were able to come out and see what our program is about. One of the first classes that you will be introduced to is curriculum. Now, with curriculum, we teach you how to design a curriculum. It could be for a day, for a week, for a month, or even the whole year. But we will teach you how to write lesson plans, how to think about student needs, where students are currently, and then later, how can we assess student growth? Did our students learn from us? So this is what the curriculum class is about. <clears throat> Another class we have is called Language Acquisition Theories, or for short, Theory. Well, how do children learn a second language? How do they learn their first? This class will look at theories and issues in education as a whole, as well as different things that can help or possibly hurt second language growth. In theory, you will do some mini teachings based on the different theories that you learned about in class. So it's very practical and hands-on as well. Our, another course we teach is called Classroom Management. So this class will teach you about what I like to call the hidden curriculum of education. How are you going to organize your learning environment? How are you going to make sure students are behaving positively? How can we redirect behaviors that we don't really want to see? And in this course, a big portion of it will be about our children's event. So you'll actually get to take some of these ideas that you learned in management and apply them to a real world situation. I think that's all I have, so I'll take, give it back to Eli. Thank you, everyone. It's a little cozy up here. All right, uh, our next course is called Classroom English. Uh, in Classroom English, we explore this notion of teaching English in English. Now, I think when we, when we hear that idea, teaching English in English, uh, that sounds excellent. That sounds like probably we should be doing that, right? But um, then exactly how can you do that if that's not the way you learned English? Uh, it's uh, very likely you learned English in Korean. So how basically does a teacher interact with the class in English? How do you uh, start with students who don't know any English at all? How can you communicate them with them without just going back, falling back on uh, your native language, Korean? We'll talk about how to do reading, listening, speaking, and writing activities in a fun and communicative way. And we'll work on make, designing, making, and teaching our own activities, uh, practicing with our classmates. So again, we will be able to use English in a natural and communicative way and be a good model for our students. So in this class, you'll really practice teaching English and English so you can have more confidence about doing that when you stand in front of a real class of students. Uh, another course where we will learn a bit more about children is called Child Development and Teaching. In this course, uh, I think as I mentioned before, we, we all know that kids are different from adults. Like we, we basically understand that, but how exactly are they different? You know, a lot of us haven't been kids for a long time. Uh, it was a long time ago when we were children. We might not remember what that was like so clearly. So uh, we need to relearn again. How do children develop physically in their bodies, emotionally, socially with each other, and cognitively in their minds? We'll discuss the importance of getting to know our students, uh, where they are in their development, and then how we can help them go to the next level in their learning. 
we'll explore why it's important not just to tell children information, but to help guide them in using their own minds to come to their own understanding of language. And of course, we'll talk about choosing the right activities for different age levels and different English ability levels so that we can set our students up uh, for success, to gain confidence in their language learning so that they can enjoy learning English uh, for the rest of their lives. And then finally, we have literacy development. Uh, literacy is a, basically a fancy word for reading. Right? How do we teach children how to read? Um, in this class, we'll start with helping children recognize the sounds in the English language and then recognizing which sounds match to which letters, uh, call, which is called phonics and is the backbone of early uh, literacy instruction. We'll also help students uh, learn to recognize and use sight words, words where the spelling doesn't match the pronunciation. And we'll also learn how to ask students questions during a story time or a reading that will really help check their understanding of the material and help them, again, to think and learn on their own. We, in this class, we get a lot of practice doing read-alouds. Every student will read a book to the class and, and ask those literacy questions as they go. We'll talk about choosing how to choose a good book to read with kids and how to do a mini lesson with students based on uh, reading. So all of this will give you the ability you need to guide children from not being able to read at all to, be, to being able to read on their own at a more advanced level. So all that tells you uh, what we learn in the program, but you might be wondering, how do we teach? Do we just lecture for two hours? Fortunately, no, that's not what we do. We don't just stand up here and lecture. Our main way of teaching is activities, 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 <laughs> and more activities. <laughs> okay, we, uh, the teacher will oftentimes introduce a concept, but then most of the class will be spent in groups or pairs uh, doing activities to explore the concepts we're studying, to learn by doing, to learn by making things, so that uh, you are learning from your own experience, just as you hope that your own students will learn from experiencing English in your class. And so in all this learning and making and doing, uh, we will equip you to be the best children's teacher that you can possibly be. Thank you, and we'll all be around after to answer any questions you might have. Thanks.
그리고 캠프시데이라고 이제 이것도 해마다 이제 하고 있는데요. 여러 가지 특강이나 이런 프로그램들이 네, 저희 학교에서 이루어지고 있고요. 그리고 저희가 이제 많은 그 해외에 유명한 강사들을 초청해서 저희가 특강을 하고 있어요. 그래서 여러분들께서 이제 테스트 프로 듣게 되시면은 다 무료로 이 특강들을 다 들으실 수가 있고요. 네, 그리고 저희가 취업 박람회를 해마다 이제 학기마다 열고 있는데 취업 박람회에서 직접 이제 그 어학원이라든지 여러 업체들에서 나와서 취업 박람회에서 직접 채용을 하기도 하고 있는데 많은 정보를 채용하고 있으니까 여러분들이 참여하실 수 있고요. 그 다음 저희가 해외에 한 30개 정도 대학이랑 연계되어 있어서 학점을 연계를 하고 있습니다. 그래서 유학에 관심 있으신 분들은 이것도 참고해 주시고 저희 SMU 테스트 YL 테스트홀은 그 시간이 240시간, 그러니까 5, 5개월 과정인데요. 240시간으로 이루어져 있고 수강료는 385만 원입니다. 그리고 아까 그 온라인 프로그램 말씀드렸던 SMU 테스트 같은 경우에는 100시간인데 이게 107만 원으로 되어 있고요. 어, 장학 혜택을 보시면은 SMU 테스트홀이랑 YL 테스트홀은 그 등록금 수강료 할인 혜택이 있어요. 그래서 그 숙명에서 졸업 동문이라든지 현직 교사에는 그 할인 혜택이 있는데 졸업 동문은 수강률 15% 그리고 현직 교사는 수강률 30% 할인 혜택이 있습니다. 그리고 성적 우수 장학금이 있는데 봉학기 그러니까 내년 봉학기에 입학을 하시면 이제 여름에 그 하와이에서 하는 그 워크숍을 참가할 수 있는 참가비를 저희가 지원해드릴 예정입니다. 그래서 두명 SNU YL 두 명씩 뽑아가지고 두 분씩 뽑아서 지원해드릴 예정이고 가을 학기에 이제 수업을 들으시는 분들은 어, 겨우 그 장학금을 SMYL 다섯 분씩 뽑아서 50만원씩 장학금을 저희가 제공해드리고 있습니다. 이건 학기마다 조금씩 변동될 수가 있으니까 이게 100% 지금 확실한 건 아니고 지금 현재 하고 있는 건 이렇게 되어 있고요. 그 다음에 이제 입시 지원하실 때 일반 전형 특별 전형이 있는데, 어, 일반 전형은 일단, 그, 그러니까 일반 전형 특별 전형 공통 자격이 그 4년제 대학 졸업 혹은 졸업 예정자이시고요. 네. 그 다음에 이제 초중고등학교 현직 교사나 아니면 기간직 교사 영화 주문 강사들은 특별전형 A로 지원하실 수 있고 그 다음에 그 공인 영화 점수 토익, 토플, 탭스 이런 공인 영화 점수를 가지고 있는 분은 특별전형 B로 지원하실 수 있습니다. 그리고 영어권 국가 학사나 석사 소지자도 마찬가지로 특별전형 B로 지원하실 수가 있고요. 근데 특별전형에 해당하시지 않는 분들은 일반 전형으로 지원하시면 됩니다. 그러니까 뭐 토익 성적표가 없다. 그래도 일반 전형으로 지원하시면 되니까요. 네, 아, 지원하실 수 있고요. 그 다음에 s m e t 지학에서 온라인 프로그램 말씀해 드린 그거는 이제 70학점 이상 이수한 지학생 4년제 대학교 지학생 및 졸업생 그러니까 지학생도 가능하신 거죠 3학년 학생들 4학년 학생들 가능하시고요 어 저희가 시험은 쓰기 시험이라는 영어 인터뷰로 돼 있는데 특별 전형은 쓰기 시험을 보지는 않고 네 일반 전형만 쓰기 시험을 보게 됩니다 특별 전형을 지원하신 분들은 쓰기 시험을 보지 않고요 이제 쓰기 시험 그 영어 성적을 제출하시면 그게 이제 쓰기 시험 점수 환산이 되고 특별전형 A 같은 경우에는 다 쓰기 시험은 뭐 만점 처리되고 이런 식으로 되고요. 인터뷰 같은 경우는 모든 분들이 보셔야 되는 인터뷰, 영어 인터뷰를 진행할 거고요. 그래서 이렇게 시험과 인터뷰 간단하게 입학 전형은 되어 있고요. 그 다음에 입학 전형 보시면은 이제 쓰기 시험은 30분 동안 쓰기 시험을 보시는데 저희가 두 문제를 드리고 두 문제 중에서 편한 거 하나를 골라서 푸시는 형태로 되어 있습니다. 그 손으로 직접 쓰는 쓰기 시험이고요. 서론 본론 결론 형식으로 이렇게 세, 개, 세개 문단으로 쓰는 형식으로, 네, 진행이 되고요 채점은 이제 논리적으로 글 주기가 잘 이루어져 있는지, 또그 다음에 영어 문법이나 어휘나, 또 문장, 영어, 네, 잘 올바르게 썼는지, 그런 걸 봐서 채점을 하고요 어, 그니까 문제는, 문제 주제 같은 거는 보통 어떤 상황을 주고 그 상황에 대해서 쓰라고 하는, 그러니까 교실 상황이나 이런 걸 보통 주고 거기에 맞춰서, 이런 상황에서 어떻게 할 것인가, 이렇게 쓰는 문 형식이고요. 그 다음에 영어 면접은 세 분이 같이 들어가셔서 면접관 두 분이 면접을 보실 텐데요. 처음에 이제 간단하게 자기소개하고 그 다음에 그룹 테스크 카드가 있는데 그 카드에 나와 있는 테스크를 가지고 세 분이서 토론을 하시는 그런 토론 면접 형태로 네, 이루어지고요. 주제는 이것도 마찬가지로 어떤 뭐 영어 교육 관련해서 어떤 수업에서 이런 상황이 있는데 어떻게 할 것인가 뭐 이런 식으로 나오고 네 그런 나오니까 문제 자체가 어렵지는 않고요. 그냥 이제 본인의 생각을, 전공 지식 이런 건 아니고, 본인의 생각을 잘 말씀하시면 되는 그런 면접이고요. 10분에서 15분 정도 네, 진행되게 됩니다. 그리고 s m e l t c 온라인 과정은 저희가 온라인으로 인터뷰를 봅니다. 스카이프로 화상으로 인터뷰를 보고, 이것도 마찬가지로 세 분이 같이 이제 인터뷰를 보시게 되는데, 이거는 토론 인터뷰는 아니고, 그냥 1대1로 거의 대답하는, 질문을 대답하는 그런 형태로 되어 있고요. 
어, 저희가 나머지 유일의 분물에 보시면은 저, 그 일정이 나와 있어요. 저희가 10월 26일부터 접수를 받을 거고요. 입학 시험은 11월 7일 토요일 날 입학 시험이 있습니다. 네, 그리고 자세한 일정은 그 나눠드린 임무를 참고해 주시고요. 네, 이러한 일정으로 진행이 됩니다. 어, 그러면은 이제 2부 순서를 가질 건데요. 일단 혹시 주차하신 분들은 학교에 주차하신 분들은 저희가 나눠드린 이 유인물을 출차할 때 제출해 주시면은 이제 할인된 가격으로 2시간에 천원 이렇게 내시면, 내시고 나가시면 되고요. 어, 이제 2부 순서는 여기 보시면은 세 가지 나오는데, 네, 일단 207호 여기, 여기서는 제가 이제 s n u y 의 채소에 대해서 좀더 자세하게 설명드리고, 그 다음에 이제 취업이나 유학 부분에 대해서 간단하게 설명을 드릴 거예요. 그래서 그 관심 있으신 분들은 여기에 남아주시면 되고요. 그 다음에 이제 3층으로 올라가시면 302호랑 303호에 s n u y 의 재학생들과 만날 수 있는 시간이 있는데요. 302호는 y 의 채소를, 303호는 s n u 채소를. 네, 가셔가지고 직접 지금 수업을 듣고 계신 재학생분들께 네, 자세한 수업에 대해서 이제 궁금하신 사람 직접 물어보시고 1대1로 상담할 수 있습니다. 그리고 아까 그 온라인 프로그램 설명드렸잖아요. 그 부분에 대해서는 저희 208호 여기 바로 앞에서 네, 저희가 또 상담을 해드리고 있으니까 네, 그쪽으로 가시면 되고요. 네, 그러면은 지금 네, 이동을 해주시면 되겠습니다. 네, s m u 테스트론 303호, y m 테스트론 302호. SMEL 티치 프로그램은 208호. 네, 그리고 이제, 취업 유학 안내라든지 프로그램에 대해서 좀더 자세한 안내 제가 여기서 또 설명을 해드릴 거고요. 그러면 이제 제가 s m u 테스트 와이어 테스트 프로그램에 좀더 자세히 설명드릴게요. 어, 먼저 s m u 테스트는 네 저희가 뭐 다, 잘 알고 계시겠지만 일반 테스트 프로그램이고요. 그 미국 메릴랜드 대학교에서 저희랑 협력해가지고 운영하고 있는 프로그램이고, 네그 가장 차이점 s m u 와이 연령이에요. 그러니까 와이어 테스트 같은 경우 는좀 어린 초등학생 정도 아이들을 가르치는 교수법 배우는 거고 s m u 테스트는 그냥 특정한 연령에 그 포커스를 두지 않고 일반적인 테솔 네, 과정으로 가르치는 거고요. 와이의 테솔 같은 경우에는 한 6세에서 12세 정도 어린아이들을 가르치는 교수법을 배우는 프로그램입니다. 네, 프로그램 그 수학료는 둘다 s n u 테솔 와이의 테솔 385만 원이고요. 그 다음에 아까도 할인 좀 말씀드렸었는데 초중고등학교 전교사 부분들은 30% 할인되고 숙면여대 동문분들께서는 15% 할인을 받으실 수 있습니다. 그 강의 시간은 5개월간은 24, 240시간으로 되어 있습니다. 이제 3일씩 나오시고 하루에 4시간에서 12시간씩 일주일에 수업을 들어서 20주, 그래서 240시간이 되고요. 그다음에 주말방 같은 경우에 수요일이나 토요일 나오시는데 네, 수요일에는 4시간, 토요일 8시간 걸으시고 해서 일주일에 12시간 수업을 들으시고 개강은 내년 2월이랑 8월, 이번에도 보면 은 이제 내년 5학기 같은 경우에 1월 말 이렇게 개강을 하고 있고요. 
그래서 1년에 두 학기가 있는데 이제 하나씩 때 둘을 생각합니다 수업 시간 같은 경우에는 오전 반은 SNU는 하수금 9시부터 1시까지 그 다음에 YL은 화목금 9시부터 1시까지 이렇게 돼 있고 오후 반 같은 경우에는 SNU YL 그 다음 화수금 1시부터 5시 이렇게 수업을 하고요 주말 반은 수요일 6시 반부터 10시 반그 다음에 토요일 10시부터 7시 네, 중간에 잠수시간하고 이렇게 수업이 진행되고요 오노프 통합과 아까 잠깐 이제 저희 대빈 교수님께서 말씀해 주셨는데 이게 좀 바쁘신 분들이나 멀리 사시는 분들은 일주일에 두번 학교에 오시기 어려우니까 한 번만 오실 수가 있어요 그래서 수요일은 온라인으로 수업을 정해진 시간에 들으시면 되는데 이런 오노프 통합반 같은 경우에는 수요일이 7시 반부터 네, 그래서 직장인 분들이 이제 주말만 6시 반에 오시기 부담되시는 분들은 이제 7시 반부터 시작을 하니까 온라인으로 또 하니까 오노프 통합반도 많이 들으시고요 7시 반부터 10시 20분까지 이렇게 3시간 수요일에 들으시고 토요일 그 대신 이제 9시부터 해서 네, 9시간에 들으시게 됩니다. 네. 네. 교재는 저희가 이제 주교재랑 부교재가 있어요. 주교재 같은 경우 시중에 나와 있는 책들이고 부교재는 저희가 이제 제본으로 만든 책들인데 나중에 입학하시게 되면 저희가 안내를 드릴 거고요. 이제 학기마다 조금씩 책이 바뀔 수가 있어요. 지금도 이제 이번 학기 거는 홈페이지에 책이 올라가 있는데 다음 학기 다음 학기에는 뭐 한두 번씩 바뀔 수도 있고요. 그래서 그건 나중에 다시 공지를 드리겠습니다. 학점이 저희가 이제 다섯 과목 이렇게 들으시면은 그게 학점 평균 두 마이너스 이상을 받으셔야 돼요. 2.7, 4.3 만점 2.7 이상 받으셔야 돼. 모든 과목, 그러니까 모든 과목이 그런, 그런 건 아닌데 평점 평균이. 네, B-2.7 이상 그렇게 받으셔야 되고 F 학점이 없으셔야 네, 자격증이 나가고요 만약에 F 학점이 하나라도 있으면 은 자격증이랑 수료증 못 받으시고 뭐 F는 없지만 2.7이 안 되시는 분들은 수료증은 받으실 수 있습니다 수료증 네, 그런데 이제 자격증을 당연히 공부하시고 받으셔야겠죠 그래서 자격증 못 받으시는 분들이 학기별로 있긴 있습니다 거의 많이는 없는데 네. 잘 해주셔야 되고요. 네, F 학점이 있으면 잘좀못 받으시니까 공부 열심히 하셔야 되고요. 그 다음에 이제 s l 테스트 같은 경우에 지간 0.5 점 감점, 결석 1점 감점 이렇게 규정이 되어 있고요. 네, 지간이나 결석 할 때는 해당 과목 교수님께 미리 연락드리고 네, 그렇게 하셔야 되고 혹시 수업을 빠지시게 되면 같은 진도에 이제 다른 안에서 수업을 들으실 수는 있어요. 그렇게 하실 수 있고, 이제 그런 게 추석으로 인정이 되기도 하는데, 네, 부득이하게 빠지셔야 되는 분들은, 뭐 오전반에서 빠지셨으면, 그 주말반에서 보강을 하시고, 뭐 이런 식으로 좀 가능하신 부분은 있고요. YL 테스트 같은 경우는 추석이 되게 까다로워요. 추석이 까다로워서, 일단은 다섯 번 계셔가면 페일이 된, 되고요. 자격증 못 받으시고요. 어, 2회 계속 하시면 2점 감점, 3회 계속 하시면 4점 감점, 4회 계속 하시면 8점 감점. 네, 감점이 많이 되시면 나중에 그게 또 성립도 안 좋게 받으셔가지고 비만에서도 안 되시면 안 되니까 이렇게 결석을 거의 하시면 안 되고요. 다섯 번 결석하시면 바로 이제 자격증을 못 받으시게 되네요. 네, 그리고 이것도 메이크업이 있는데 그러니까 못 들으신 경우 다른 반의 수업을 들으실 수 있는데 YL에서는 그게 또 추석으로 인정은 안 해주세요, 교수님들이. 그냥 수업을 못 들은 거에 대해서 이제 공부를 하셔야 되니까 들으실 수 있도록 허락을 해주시는데 네, 추석으로 인정은 안 되니까 YL 테스트는 좀더 이제 엄격하게 돼 있어서 네, 출석은 주의해 주시고요. 저희가 이게 출석이 사실 되게 좀 지키기가 쉬, 쉬운 부분 아닐 수도 있는데 저도 잘 바쁘셔가지고 근데 이게 꼭 필요한 과정들 그러니까 꼭 필요한 내용들을 저희가 수업을 하는데 또 하나도 빠지게 되면 네, 안 좋기 때문에 저희가 출석을 좀 엄격하게 하고 있으니까 이거는 꼭잘 네, 지켜 주셔야 되고요. s n u 같은 경우에는 저희가 학기 중에 이제 중간고사 끝나고서 챌린지 이벤트라고. 이벤트가 있어요. 네. 이거는 이제 평소에 한 학기 동안, 아, 그, 상반 학기 동안 수업 배우신 내용을 가지고 그 내용을 적용해서 이제 문제를 푸는 그런 방식인데 어떤 주제를 주고, 그러니까 미션을 주고, 미션을 수행하는 건데, 이번, 네, 이번 주에도, 다음 주에도 이제 지금 재학생들이 그런 행사를 가질 건데요. 이런 행사를 통해서 많이 네, 실제적 티칭이나 이런 부분에 도움이 되실 거고요. 어, 와, y l 태설 같은 경우에는 칠러스데이 이벤트가 5월달에 있을 거예요. 그래서 이거는 이제 어린 아이들을 초청해서 애들이 실질적으로 네, 영어를 가르치는 그런 프랙티컬 통안에서 하는 프로그램인데요. 보시는 것처럼 뭐 이렇게 
저희는 초청이 없고 여러 가지 프로그램을 통해서 영어를 가르치는 실습의 기회가 있습니다. 네, 그리고 제가 멘토십 프로그램이라고 있어요. 근데 이미 SMU, i t 솔 p l t 솔 졸업하신 분들 초청해서 졸업하신 분들이 이제 어떻게 지금 프로그램을 통해서 배운 걸 가지고 어떻게 영어 교육 현장에서 일을 하고 계시는지 그런 걸 조언을 들을 수 있는 그런 기회가 있고요. 이제 내년에도 2월 달에 이제 여러분 2월 개강하는데 개강하고 아마 거의 직후에 이제 프로그램을 가실 건데요. 어, 실질적으로 이제 유학 가시는 분들도 있고, 어, 공방을 운영하시는 분들도 있고, 학원에서 강사 하시는 분들도 있고, 그런 분들 네, 조언을 많이 들을 수 있는 기회가 되니까, 그리고 1대1 매칭도 시켜줘서 지속적으로 이제 관리도 되는 부분이 있어서, 그런 분들 관심 있으면 나중에 프로그램을 신청해 주시고요. 그 다음에 저희가 취업 박람회를 이제 이번 학기에도 11월 달에 하고 다음 학기에도 5월 달에 할 텐데요. 취업 박람회 때는 20개 정도? 15개에서 20개 정도 기관에서 와서 그쪽에서 바로 이제 면접을 보는 경우도 있고요. 이제 취업에 대한 자세한 정보들 네, 안내해 드릴 거고, 그래서 취업 박람회 네, 이런 기회도 나중에 놓치지 마시기 바라고요. 그다음 저희가 또 실습 기회가 있어요. 발렌트의 트레이닝 프로그램이라고 SMUIL 들으시는 분들께서는 이제 프로그램 참여하실 수 있는데 그 봉사활동 기관에 가서 직접 아이들을 가르치는 네, 정기적으로 일주일에 한 번씩 가서 가르치는 그런 게 있으니까 그것도 네, 좋은 실습의 기회가 될수 있으니까 필요하신 분들은 신청해 주시고 저희가 지금 새 기관에서 빛나는 건 소망을 찾는 연세가연 사회복지관 여기 새 기관에서 계속 몇년 동안 여기서 운영을 하고 있고요 보통 이제 초등학생들 대상으로 네, 초등학교 중학생 초등학생들 대상으로 가르치고 있습니다 네 그러면 여기까지 간단하게 제가 SMU y 에서 프로그램을 소개해 드렸고요 그 다음에 이제 취업 유학 부분인데 혹시 관심 없으신 분들은 또 이제 가서 대학생분들 상담 받으셔도 되고요. 네, 그럼 취업, 취업이나 유학 부분들 간단히 설명 드리겠습니다. 어, 먼저 지금 유학 부분 말씀드리면 은 저희가 한 30대 정도 대학이랑 합정 교류를 맺고 있어요. 그래서 여기 보시면은 유펜 다들 아시는 유명한 대학, 있고 NIU라든지 이런 유명한 대학들, 네, 아이비드 대학들도 있고요. 어, 한 30개 정도 대학에서 저희가 이제 주로 미국, 영국, 호주 네, 이쪽 대학들에서 학점 인정을 해주는데 그러니까 석사과정, 테솔, 석사과정을 진학하시면 여기 자격증 과정에서 이수하셨던 학점을 일부러 인정받으시는 거예요. 보통 학교들이 6학점 정도 인정을 해주고요. 6학점에서 완전히 3학점 정도 이렇게 인정을 해주시니까 거의 한 학기 정도를 덜 들으셔도 되는 거예요. 그래서 꼭 미국이나 뭐 호주나 영국이나 그런 테솔 석사 학위가 필요하신 분들은 여기서 프로그램 듣고 나서 가시면은 한 학기 정도 절약하실 수 있으니까 비용이랑 시간이 많이 절약되시겠죠. 네, 학비가 되게 해외도 비싸니까 여기서 좀 들으시고 가시면 학비가 절약되실 수 있는 그런 네, 도움이 되실 거고요. 어, 그 어느 학교들이 한 협력이 되어 있는지는 저희 홈페이지에 들어가 보시면 정보를 얻으실 수 있어요. 네, 여기 보시면 저희 홈페이지 화면인데 여기 메뉴에서 커리어스의 스타킹 업로드라고 있습니다. 거기 들어가시면은 여기 이쪽에 그 다운로드를 받으실 수가 있는데 PDF 파일 다운, 다운로드 받으시면 은 거기에 리스트가 또 나와 있고 리스트 학교별로 입학 조건에 대해서 자세히 나와 있습니다. 이런 식으로 네, 어, 조건 나와 학점 인정이 얼마나 되는지 뭐 이런 부분들이 그리고 학비가 얼마인지 이런 게 나와 있으니까요. 홈페이지에서 다운 받으셔가지고 확인해 보시면 될것 같아요. 저희가 특별히 이제 좀 UCO랑 o c 라는 학교라는 이제 활발히 교류를 하고 있는데 직접 국회에서 오셔가지고 그 인, 어, 석사과정 설명회나 인터뷰를 하고 있으니까요. 그 것도 아주 학기 중에 할 거니까 같이 있는 분들 참여해 주시고요. 저희가 OCU 학교에서는 장학금 혜택을, 학비의 절반을 장학금을, 해, 혜택을 줘요. 그래서 이게 되게 큰 돈인데, 망고리 상당히 큰 돈인데요. 한 학기에 한 명씩 저희가 뽑고 있습니다. 그래서 재학생들 분만 아니라 졸업생들 해당이 되시는데, 네, 저희 컴퓨터스를 졸업하시거나 재학하시면은, 한 분씩 뽑아서 이렇게 저희가 추천을 해드리면 거기서 이제 반액으로 학비를 네, 제공해 주시고요. 그 다음에 SIT도 이번에 최근에 2015년에 협정을 맺었는데 여기서 7,500원 정도 혜택이 있으니까 네, 그런 1년에 2명, 2명씩 가능하시거든요. 그래서 관심 있으신 분들은 적극적으로 활용해 주시고요. 그 다음에 취업 부분에 대해서 간단히 말씀드리면 어, 저희가 그 테솔 취업 게시판이 있어요. 수명연대 테솔 홈페이지 들어오시면 취업 게시판이 있는데 거기 보시면은 한 달에 한 300에서 400번 정도 취업 
그 부인 광고가 올라와요. 그 그만큼 저희 테소리 인지도가 있기 때문에 저희 열반 뭐 서랍이나 잡사이트보다도 여기에 영어 관련된 그 강사나 이런 부인 광고도 많이 올라오거든요. 그래서 보시고 여기서 참가해 주시면 될까요? 저희가 그 취업 게시판 통계를 보면은 유초등 관련된 이제 그 기관에서 제일 많이 취업을 부인 방법을 내더라고요. 그래서 관심 있으면 YL 테스트 같은 경우에도 요즘은 되게 많이 인기가 있으니까 참고해 주시고요. 뭐 저희가 취업 조사를 이제 학기마다 하고 있습니다. 이제 저희 졸업생들 대상으로 취업 조사를 해보면 응답자 중에 한 80% 정도가 거의 취업을 하시는 걸로 통계가 나오고 있고요. 네, 그러니까 여러분들 취업에 제일 많이 관심이 있을 텐데 그 수능 테스트를 자격증을 가지고 있으시면 사실 많이 이제 취업하는 데 많이 도움이 되실 거예요. 일단 저희 홈페이지에 다들 부인관으로 올리고 있는 걸로 막 봐도 얼마나 이제 인지도가 있는지 아실 수 있을 겁니다. 네, 홈페이지 활용하시는 방법은 여기 커리어스의 좌우 어플티미티라는 게시판이 있고요. 그걸 좌우 보드라고 있는데 여기 있는 부인관으로 계속 하루에 30번 정도 올라오고 있으니까 이런 걸 활용하시면 되고요. 네, 그리고 저희가 아까도 말씀드렸지만 취업 방향에 학기별로 한 번씩 하는데 한 15개, 20개, 50개 업체 중에 참여를 하니까 여기서 직접 바로 먼저 보는 경우도 있고요. 그래가지고 여기서 취업 되시는 경우도 있습니다. 많이 참여해 주시고요. 네, 그럼 여기까지 제가 설명드렸고요. 혹시 이제 궁금하신 분이나 질문 있으신 분들은 저한테 질문해 주시면 되고 지금도 아직 계속 이제 SMU랑 YL이랑 SMU 상담이 진행 중에 있으니까요. 네, SMU 테스트는 335, YL 테스트는 302, 그 다음에 SMU 테스트는 오늘 1 8 5 가서 지금 상담을 받으시면 되고요. 일단 궁금하신 분은 앞으로 나오셔서 질문해 주시면 됩니다. 그러면 네, 수고 많으셨고요. 수고 감사합니다. 안녕하세요.